Hello everyone, I'm Chastic44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Baldur's Gate. Last episode, we finally made our way to the Friendly Arms Inn. While we do still need to explore around out the outside, because that's what I do, we need to actually go into the Friendly Arms Inn itself. And incidentally, we got attacked when we were here. Shocking, I know. People really don't like us. And we found a bounty notice, which basically means we're worth 200 gold. That'll be interesting. Evil people are after us. Anyway, let's go in here and find someone so we can rest and sell the things we have. Hey, friend. Good to meet a fine sod such as yourself. I can't stand the way the roads are cut off these days. My uncle's in Baldur's Gate and I can't get there to see him. How come the roads are cut off? Where have you been these past few months? The roads are crawling with brigands and bandits after every scrap of iron you got on ye. Surely you must have fled some on your trip here. This you came by the West Road, that is. Why is the West Road still open? If there is ever a book shortage, that road to Candlekeep will be the most dangerous of them all, I assure you. But these folks are after metal, so they are sticking mainly to the larger trade routes between Baldur's Gate and Harmon. And guess what? This here inn is smack dab in the middle of them all, or it all. Okay then. Bye. Yes? There's a guy here named Dorn. Who are you? Mm. It's about time. Bring me another flagon of ale. I think you've mistaken me for someone else. Then why do you bother me? Be gone. Nothing would please me more. How rude. A brooding half-orc at the Friendly Arm Inn mistook me for a servant. I had half a mind to tell him where to stick his jutting teeth, but decided against it. He looks like the sort would be handy in a fight. Perhaps we'll meet again under more favorable circumstances. Welp! I need some ale! Ah, look at these forks and tankards. This iron shortage shows no mercy on us drunkards and garments. Whatever could be wrong with your fork and tankard? They may be made of they be made of iron, yet they bend under the weight of this inn's meager offerings, and the handle breaks on me tanker to spill this rat spit of an ale into my lap. Ah, Nessie, get me another. I need some ale. Is there any way I can help you? Yes, ram your eyeball onto this blade to see if it'd be cursed with this metal weakness too. Ah, oh, never mind. They'll just kick me out of this place and send me amongst the very brigands who might covet me rotten tankard. Now learning about the problem with the uh, iron around here. I need some uh, okay, there was that Nessie person. Bentley Mirror Shade, you're probably the one who will be able to let me sell things. None too many travelers have been through lately. What with the supposed troubles down south? So what can I do for you? What do you have to sell me? Oh, finally, we can rest. First off, we have things I want to sell. Belt of Antipode. Despite the cold resistance, it doubles fire damage, and I don't like things doing that. So that'll be a sell. Sell the Morning Star. The Diamond. Holy crap, that's valuable. Might want to hold on to the short bow for the moment. The Bastard Sword. The sm well, I should probably give the small shield to someone. Silver Ring. Fire Gate Gem. As entertain- you know what? I'm probably going to do a save just so I can put on that girdle just to show you what happens. Uh, sell the short sword. Short sword, morning star. What do you have to sell? You got a fair amount of stuff there. History of the fateful coin. Old tales tell that luck plays a crucial role in each person's life. When each newborn baby enters into the realms, Timora flips a coin formed from the remnants of the original goddess of luck, Tyke. Bashaba calls it in the air. The moon, heads, or the cloak, tails. If Bashaba is right, that person is cursed with misfortune for the rest of his or her days. If she's wrong, Lady Luck smiles on that child for the rest of his or her life. For some rare beings, the coin lands edge on. These luckless few can forge their own fates, for they have more freedom over their destinies than the powers themselves. History of the Unicorn Run Bards and sages pass down the tale that the headwaters of the Unicorn Run are, in truth, the font of life and a cradle of fecundity. 
Each natural race is said to have emerged from the womb of Shantea onto Toril at the river's source and then traveled down the Unicorn Run to the outside world. Some say that the daughter of Shantea resides at the river's source to usher the newborns into the world, while others claim that Shiala midwives the process. Regardless of the truth, the elves, cords, and halflings all agree that the Unicorn Run is sacred to life and a site of incredible purity. As a result, all three races have strong taboos about extended trips up the run, for if the river is ever fouled, then no new races will ever be born on Toril again. Interesting. Alright, sell all those items. You! Sell those short swords, the Ander Gem. Cannot sell the long sword, a uh, broken weapon. Alright, sell all those. And we have a load of coin now! Oh my god, I'm so happy. I don't know how many arrows you have. Drinks, I don't care about those at the moment, but we would like a room. Let's see, while an adequate place to rest, rooms of this type offer little more than a room. Recuperative benefits will likely be minimal, you get what you pay for. A favorite of the frugal business traveler, rooms of this type are basic but comfortable. A good solid mattress and clean linen for when one must awaken presentable, but not so pampered as to promote oversleeping. These rooms are of excellent quality, at a somewhat reasonable price, and a definite luxury for those accustomed to sleeping under the open sky. None but the most pampered dandy would have complaints with these accommodations. And royal! A truly luxurious experience at an equally exorbitant price. Beds filled with the softest down, draped with the finest Kalimshan silks and linens. Nearly as restful as a week in a lesser room, but though who but royalty could afford the cost? I mean, we could! We have 800 gold! I'll take the noble room. Seems simple enough. Hopefully it'll bring us back to full health. Please? Almost full health. Sure, I'll take it. Um... You know, before we finish up in here, I want to see if I can get this last, uh, belt identified. I'm curious what's in it. All right, all right. Then we'll continue on and find those people we need to speak with, who I think I saw. All right. Galana? Identify this girdle. It is... Girdle of Piercing, Elves Bane. An infamous highwayman in his day, Pandar of Scardale made quite a name for himself vexing the elves of Cormanthor Forest. To their annoyance, he continually used the wood to escape the law, and with the aid of this girdle, the elves' arrows as well. Unfortunately for Pandar, pit traps and starvation proved a slower but effective substitution. Extra armor class against missile and piercing attacks. That's actually something good! Put this bow in so that we actually have one. We'll need to uh, get some arrows. You, I guess. Oh, you can't wield shields. You can't, though. This we don't need, so I guess drop it on the ground. That could be sold because we already used it. You need to get more arrows. You know what? I'm gonna do something here. First, walk outside. Now, Hurry up. let me do a save here. Alright. Right then. Clifford's yet ready. Let's see what happens when we put on the girdle of femininity masculinity. Yep. Now I'm a woman. And I'll never be able to take that off. How horrible. Granted, I think some people would approve of that. For reasons. But hey, it is a thing that has happened. Okay, now that that bit of fun has been had. What would right, have let's go back in right? and sell it. And I have this other girdle, Elves Bane, that I'm going to wear. That would be a good thing to have. Every bit of bonus helps. Oh, I didn't even realize I was carrying another potion of healing. You don't have any. You could use one. 
That works. Alright. I wonder what happens if we put the girdle on one of our companions. That would be amusing. <laughs> but no, I'm not going to. Very well. Alright then. Uh, Bentley, if you don't mind, I have one more thing to sell you and a few other things My to buy. To open the door, all who behave themselves. We'll sell that and. We've already looked at the bounty notice. I guess hold on to it for now. A longbow would be nice, but I'm using a short bow for now. Let's see. Buy some arrows there. You could buy some arrows there. I think that'll work for now. Better armor. I could. I could afford it. I could get some splint mail. I could really afford that. Oh, Buckley's Buckler? Rectangle of Mammoth Hide. No protection against it. Okay, Constitution bonus. Interesting. I am very tempted right now to get that splint mail. You know what? Screw it. We have the coin. Buy it. Oh. Bentley, the owner of the Friendly Arm Inn, told us the iron trade has slowed greatly over the past few weeks. Bentley told us that there has been some sort of trouble in the south. Perhaps we should go to Nashville. I didn't even realize he was telling us these things. Okay. Splint mail. We're wearing that. This leather this studded leather armor, you're wearing it. And this other leather armor, we're going to sell. It's been dreadful slow business lately. Iron is the lifeblood of this whole region, and it's sure painful when it gets scarce. So what can I do for you? We're selling this leather armor. It's cheap, but it's fine. Uh Maybe I should try one of these drinks. Not the Evermead, that's incredibly expensive. Arabelle and dry wine? Sure. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Noted. Okay. Please go in there. Thank you. Yes? Surrey. Yes? Ah, a new face in this cloistered place. Stand by my side and let's talk for a while. What brings you here, traveler? I was an apprentice blacksmith under Tarum Fuiruium. Fuiruium in Veragost. With the iron situation being what it is, however, I thought I'd better head somewhere else. What it maybe. Tarum's having enough trouble making a go of it as it is. Hmm. Yes? Hey, you stays out of my kitchen! You'll mess up my art! Someday I's gonna cook for a, for the duke himself. Bet you there's less fistfights in the palace so you can so as you can employ a meal from start to finish. Okay then. I hope our establishment's to your liking. Welcome to the friendly arm inn. Looks like you had a rough journey. This place is a fortress. Why all the security? Oh, Bentley wanted the inn to be a safe haven for all sorts of travelers. Anyone can stay here, but we don't tolerate any troublemaking within these walls. Did Bentley build this place? It's so solid, it looks like it's been here forever. Oh no, Bentley and Galana didn't build the inn. They found it. They were part of an adventuring party, not unlike your own. In the first few years following the time of troubles, when all the gods were walking the surface of our world, the inn was actually the hold of a powerful undead priest of Baal, god of murder. With the evil cleric awakened, weakened by the god by the death of his god, Bentley and Galana were able to destroy him once and for all, thus laying claim to his troubled fortress. Ooh. I do remember hearing something about the uh, time of trouble as being a thing. Okay. Interesting. They must have lots of stories to tell. I'm sure they do, but this inn is their life now, and they don't like to dwell on the past. You're as likely to get a tail out of them as you are to get a tooth from the mouth of a hen. It's been a pleasure meeting you, however, and I do hope you enjoy your stay. I hope our establishment's to yes, you Yes, the roads were crazy. Who are you, anyway? My name is Mes Nessie. 
The Mirror Shades hired me to work at the inn almost five years ago, and now I wouldn't leave it for the life of me. It's wonderful here, with the new faces passing through every day. Who are the Mirror Shades? Oh, Bentley and Galana. They run the place. Bentley's behind the bar there, and you can usually find Galana in the temple. I'm usually here, waiting tables and making sure everything stays nice and clean. I hope our establishment's to your liking. So who are the new faces here now? With the roads being what they are right now, there aren't too many faces around here that are new anymore. Anshi's been taking this time to write a new book, and Khaled and Jahera have been waiting anxiously in the corner over there, sleeping in shifts to make sure they don't miss whoever it is they're waiting for. Dorn's over there in the opposite corner, as far from Khaled and Jahera as possible. I'd steer clear of him if I had a choice. Uh, who else? Uh, let's see. Landrin's on the top floor, drinking up a storm. Then there was... Well, Tarnish. I'm really sorry he caused you trouble. He was all wit and charm until he heard that there were visitors at the gate. We don't allow any fighting here. We have very strict rules about that sort of thing. The guards say he jumped out of the shadows at you, and there was nothing you could do. But that's really about it. Everyone else has been here for the past two months, at least. It was so full that there's even been talk of letting people throw down their bedrolls in the temple. Hmm. Hey, a potion. I'll take that. That could go in a quick slot somewhere. Well, we do have Khaled and Jahera now. Let's take a look upstairs first before we continue on with the main quest. Ooh, there's a third level to this place. Locked, locked. Huh, you're a queer fellow. This way. Well, let's see if we can pick any of these locks. Is there a key button for this? There is. Not that one. Not that one. Okay. You insist. So those are no good. A man shouldn't speak to his better unless spoken to first. Do you have an excuse for barging in here? Unless you are here to make the beds, I want you out. Do I look like a maid service to you? No, I don't suppose that you do. You look much more like a group of brigands casing my room for valuables and gold. Perhaps you should consider a career in the domestic arts. A maid is much less likely to end her career on the end of a polearm. Unlike the job you have presently selected for yourself, just a thought. I trust you will be going now. No, and I'm not gonna bother picking the locks on these. Unshi. You kinda get better than the stability stone walls provide. Have you heard? There's a rogue ogre with a boat with a belt fetish to the south of the friendly arm inn. I had to bargain my new girdle of piercing for my life out there. I wasn't even interested in an autographed copy of my book. Hey, if you can get that belt back to me, I'd be mighty grateful. Uh, according to a dwarven cleric by the name of Unshi, a rogue ogre with a belt fetish is making a name for himself just south of the Friendly Arm Inn. As Unshi claims to be an author, maybe she'd give me a copy of her book if I can get her girdle of piercing back. You kinda get better than the stability stone walls. He was a weird one, weren't he? Ugh, I can still smell him on you. I'll pay you ten gold pieces for returning the girdle and another sixty to find the nearest bath. Unshi isn't the most charismatic person I've ever met. She gave me 70 gold pieces for returning her girdle, but only after informing me that 60 of those were to go towards my bathing fund. Well, we got a load of experience at least, so I'll take that. Wait, journal updated bath time? Huh. Well, at least we completed that quest. You kinda get better than the stability stone walls provide. Oh well, no biggie. Anything on here? Hey, a warhammer we can sell. We've got throwing daggers that we can sell. Hey, every bit of coin helps. A regular dagger that we can sell. Nothing in that one. And nothing in that one. Okay, let me guess, this chest is locked. If you can 
actually get to it. Yep, it's locked. That one is not a chest. And yet it's somehow still locked. Oh, I guess it is a, like a desk. Hmm? What is the meaning of this intrusion? I pay good money for my privacy, by what right do you disturb it? Might I inquire as to what your business is here in the arm? No, you certainly may not. My business is my concern, and so it shall remain. Be gone from my quarters before I call the guard. All right, all right. Sheesh. All right, all right. Noble man in here. No time to chit chat. About time you showed. Here, I need these tunics cleaned and pressed by this eve, and be extra careful with the golden pantaloons. It took fifteen women and a small boy from Kalimshan twelve days and four nights to weave them, so careful on the seams. Well, get going! Much as I have always dreamed of owning golden pantaloons, I must confess that I am not the cleaner that you were expecting. Not the cleaner? Not the cleaner?! Oh, well, my mistake, and I thank you for your honesty, I thank you for not stealing the pantaloons, and I will thank you kindly not to mention the padding in the codpiece. Good day. <laughs> the padding in the codpiece! <laughs> sure, I'll be sure not to mention that. Who's this guy? A pleasure it is to meet you. Hey, I've got a teeny bit of a spider infestation happening in my cellar in Baragost. I was on my way to the gate to get some poison, but this would be a lot easier on my legs, to be honest. You'll know the house when you see it. It's right to the west of the Jovial Juggler Inn. Bring back their bodies to prove you've done the job, and I'll give you a hundred gold pieces. If you could, uh, please bring my husband's old boots and my old bottle of wine back as well, and I'll throw in something extra. Okay, then. Landrin, a gnome at the Friendly Arm Inn, has apparently fled her home due to a recent spider infestation in her cellar. The house, she informs me, lies just west of the Jovial Juggler Inn in Baragost. Much as I would rather not have them in my pack, she insists on seeing the bodies of the spiders before I am to receive any payment. She hinted at an extra bit of reward if I bring her husband's old boots and her bottle of wine as well. Yeah, that's something we can work on doing, eventually. Locked. Yep. Hey, a big inn with a lot of things that we can loot here. Maybe there's some things we can sell. Arrows, actually. Those would be good to have. Nothing in that one. Nothing in that one. And these three? A battle axe that we can sell. Nothing in that one. And we got a club. Well, a club is something. Okay, nobody in there. Nobody in there. And I don't think there's anybody in here. Nope. Alright, back downstairs. We'll sell the things we managed to all pick right, up. Right. And also, there's arrows we found. I think you could use those. Oh, we can actually combine all the arrows into one. That's actually good. It's something I should have done. If you insist. All right, Bentley, if you don't mind. My inn is open to all who behave themselves. All right, we'll sell that. Those, that, that cannot sell a club. Noted. I said to sell that. Oh, jeez. There we go. Now oh, they're all sold. And we've got a fair... a good amount of coin. I just realized he has plate mail. Oh, that would be... That would be wonderful. Sadly, I can't afford that. It is way too expensive, so I'll stick with the splint mail. And it just hit me. With this iron shortage going on, resulting in weapon... in metal weapons possibly breaking, does that mean that metal armor can also break? Because if so, I am going to be very upset if in the middle of a fight, my armor suddenly breaks on me and I get stabbed in the chest. 
Oh my god, I really, really hope that's not a thing. Oh god, I'm getting shivers just at the thought. <clears throat> well, anyway, uh... You've got plenty of arrows, so you're fine. You have a long sword if you need it. You've got a short sword, I guess that's fine for now. Not wearing a belt anymore, though that belt would have been nice to have. I wish I had it. Your 1d6, 1d4, you'd probably be better with this. I guess you can have that dagger on as well. I don't know if the uh, if that'll cause any problems, but eh. anyway, I think that's it for now. Okay, and I think I'm gonna end this episode here because it's going on about long enough. A decent amount of time spent looking around the Friendly Arms Inn. Next episode, we'll finally speak with Khalid and Jahera here. Very curious what they have to say about everything. That'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Chester 44. That is Frederick Lionheart, Montaron, Imoen, and Zar. This has been a let's play of Baldur's Gate, and I shall see you all next.